Hi, Jeffrey. Good morning. How are you doing today? Hi, Reid. Thanks for having me on this last final episode of 2023. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like it's a good way to usher in a new year is to get a, a fun deep dive session with you and with a, uh, I'd say almost like a new product for DAX and it to a degree. Um, we we often, you know, in the last few years have gotten some code changes, but not very often we get a, a new way to actually play with DAX in a sandbox environment. So I think this will be a very fun session today. Um, yeah, thanks for taking time around the holidays to come on for this. Yeah, it's really, yeah, I know. It's interesting to learn some uh, hard DAX right before the holiday. So you have something <laughs> to think about. <laughs> exactly, something to play around with for uh, for people who have a bit of downtime and if they, they wanna <laughs> um, dabble a bit in the, in the code language and I, Saw a comment from Brian, yeah, uh, about the hoodie. Thank you. Um, something to keep me warmer on the winter. I'm also uh, for just um, people who tune in on a regular basis. I finally got a new setup. There is a uh, a lot of people have in front of their cameras that little mirrored screen. I just bought a new Elgato one, so I'm actually able to give pretty near consistent eye contact with you, Jeffrey, because I actually have like that that mirrored um, image that I can see directly in front of my camera lens now. I used to have to look kind of below at my monitor to talk, but now I, I bought something to help me like make more eye contact with my guest and your video is going to always be up there. So I'm now going to retrain that's, myself to look up. That That's a reassuring. I, I'm, I feel much more comfortable you're watching <laughs> over me. <laughs> exactly. Um, but no, this is, uh, uh, I think this is going to be a really great session. Um, you've been on before also to, uh, to do a couple of deep dives that we had a, about a year and a half ago. Um, but for the few people who might not know um, who you are or your involvement in the you know history of uh, the Veritapak engine and everything with that, do you want to give a little uh, background about yourself? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, uh, I I'm a, uh, on the Microsoft's uh, Power BI uh, engine team. Uh, actually, I joined Microsoft almost exactly 20 years ago. That's been a while, and. Uh, I've been always on the BI engine team, and uh, so I was a part of the original Power BI, uh, uh, the, the foundation team, and uh, I a part of the uh, effort to invent DAX. And uh, after that, I've been working on uh, DAX engine development and the DAX programming language development uh, all these years. Yeah, it's um, something that, if when was the actual, before he was named and all that, um, what was the first year that the concept of it was even like starting to be discussed out of curiosity? I think it's a uh, about a twenty uh, ten. I mean, twenty is my uh, anniversary at Microsoft. Uh, about a ten years ago. Yeah. Okay. That's it's, it's yeah. a, uh, maybe my memory is not a precise, but I think that's the rough time uh, time frame. Yeah. It, it's uh, especially 20, with COVID. Time flies 20, to a degree, right? 13, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, is it is it ten years? Because Power BI has been publicly. Uh, 2015, so seven years for Power BI, and Power Pivot so the, was around yeah, about so five two years, years before, before that. that. That's a that's yeah. about right. Yeah, that's about right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's um it, it's something that has come a long way since then. I I remember just. When it first came out, there was only a couple people, like it was Rob Colley and like a few others who were uh, Casper. For the, there was a few individuals who were blogging about it, but it was still like a very new thing. And now it's, you know, pretty much the the lifeblood of the entire BI stack for Microsoft. So it's it's nice to have seen the Veritapak engine become so massively widespread as like the foundational platform for it. Yeah, you're right. It actually surprised all of us how fast that this thing become popular over the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, yeah. like any new product, it's a slow adoption. Uh, back mm -hmm. then, I remember Tableau uh, was still pretty dominating in this space. But uh, just in the last two years, I noticed that many people started talking about the Power BI being the default solution and that everything else need to justify why they're better. Yeah, that's a very interesting change of dynamics. I think it also helped when they started including Power BI Pro with E5 SKUs, for sure, because that pretty much just gave everybody a seat with Power BI, who was a Fortune 500 company that owned any kind of an office uh, subscription. Absolutely. The pricing model uh, yeah. definitely helped a lot. I agree. Yes. Exactly. Um, but fast forwarding to, to today, um, back in November, we got that new DAX query editor um, that we'll be talking about today. but. Uh, what are what's some of the stuff around the best practices that we'll be kind of getting into um, as part of our discussion around DAX and some of the new new releases that we've had um, in the last few months? 
Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, Dax uh, query view is the only new view I believe added since the inception of Power BI, right? The, the original mm. three views, the report view, the uh, the data view, and the model view have been there for, uh, for from the beginning. So this is only the first time since uh, the beginning that a new view is added. This will, I believe, uh, definitely help uh, uh, a lot more DAX developers to start uh, learning uh, how to write the uh, DAX queries. Uh, it's it's really it, it, this really makes a uh, Power BI desktop uh, much more uh, powerful than desktop has always been a very uh, important uh, uh, booster to the adoption to Power BI because it will give users uh, uh, a very safe uh, sandbox to play to do experiment without worrying about uh, their live uh, uh, reports and uh, DAX query review will give them a uh, additional power to do even more complex uh, experiments uh, and uh, uh, and the uh, well feel very safe that uh, they're still in a sandbox environment. So that definitely. Exactly. And I, as I will get into once we actually start to see this, I, 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 I've, I will find that this is going to make it a lot easier to like save, save notes, developer pages, because I'm sure pretty much everybody in the chat, anybody who's built a Power BI report has at some point saved a PBX file with hidden pages that had a bunch of visuals and other stuff designed literally just to analyze the, the code, um, especially when they, if they weren't using external tools or anything. So it's kind of nice to clean up the report layer and have that special view where you can just have as many tabs as you want and, and just save a lot of your testing work or notes for clients or anybody else that you're handing this off to. Yeah, actually, I... <laughs> It just just yesterday, it helped me actually in my own work. So I was trying to extract some data from a model. And mm -hmm. uh, while I was writing the DAX query, I realized that, oh, actually it's really more convenient for me if I have uh, created a calculated column in the middle that will help simplify my uh, DAX expression. But I really don't want to pollute my model with a new calculated column. I only need this for this one query. So I created in the DAX query view, and the nice thing is I realized that, oh, now I can actually save, save it along with my model so it stays a part of the model without actually polluting it. Previously, I would have to create okay. a calculated column, hide oh. it, but that still doesn't feel right to me because it doesn't belong there. I don't need it as okay. part of my model. Yeah, so, so it's the, actually, I found that's okay. really convenient. Yeah. So, so the final... The final measure didn't need a calculated column, but you is one of those things where you kind of create it temporarily, usually in the yes. table, just so you can kind of see row by row what what's happening before you, you yes. finish the iterations. Yes. Um, yes. So you just you basically just a summarized table or something like that, where you you have uh -huh. the table with yes. the extra column. It's saved just as a query. That's OK. I haven't even thought of that yet, but that's that also is a great use for that. Um, so, yeah, I it, mean, it, it was not yeah. my plan. I just found, oh, that's really convenient. I have a column, but uh, it's confined to this one report, yet it's uh, saved with my uh, PBIX all the time. So every time I open it, I don't lose it. So I found that's really convenient. It doesn't pollute my model, yet I don't lose it, and it stay with my model all the time, get the package together. So I actually, uh, there are many. there will be many more interesting use cases of this feature that people will find out. If, uh, if you're ready to get started, like, uh, I think there's there's going to be a lot of cool stuff we can show. Um, but if you're ready to go, I can flip over to your yeah. screen and we can take it off from there. Uh, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I can see my screen. That's great. So uh, as uh, Reid has uh, already hinted, today we'll be talking about how to use, uh, how to write the DAX queries in using the DAX query view. Uh, there will be, uh, I, I want to show uh, many different ways of uh, writing the essential core part of uh, any DAX query. And then I want to explain why uh, one of them is recommended over the others, uh, since uh, many of them will have uh, some, uh, like a very similar behavior for the beginners, yet uh, uh, only after uh, like an extensive use, you will find out uh, the, like a special behavior of each method. So we don't have, we don't want to go to, into all those technical details. So, so I want to just add some like a history to the introductions of those functions, the rationale behind their uh, invention mm -hmm. this way. Uh, 
I, I hope I can convince you that uh, this is why uh, I think this approach is better than the others uh, without getting into too many technical details. So uh, before we look at the actual DAX patterns, let's first review the most important gradients of what I call the fundamental trail of any DAX query. Uh, there are like uh, three essential elements that uh, are uh, central to the vast majority of uh, BI queries, not just Power BI queries. Uh, the first one is the grouping columns. The second one are the set of filters. And the third one are the uh, is the measures. So basically, you people tend to when they build a visual, they will drag some columns to their visual, and then they can drag some measures or aggregations to the visual. And finally, they will set, set some filters, either through filter cards, or through uh, slices, or uh, slicers, or uh, through interactions uh, with other visuals. Uh, so for people who are more familiar with uh, the SQL select select statement, uh, we can roughly say uh, the grouping columns are similar to the group by columns. Actually, it's more powerful. I can explain why. Uh, and uh, the filters are similar to the where clause of a SQL select. And the measures, there's really no true equivalent in SQL. This is actually the the biggest one of the biggest inventions of Power BI, that the concept of measures. Like uh, also, like in the past two months, we officially introduced uh, the concept of uh, the idea of a semantic model because Power BI always are actually, if anything, super strong on the modeling aspect, the semantic modeling aspect, and. Uh, the reason is it has the concept of measures that has really no SQL mm -hmm. equivalent. But we can say uh, for simplest, in the simplest cases, uh, measures are just uh, basic aggregations. Okay, so uh, if we have to map the three uh, uh, concepts uh, to a SQL st statement, you can roughly say the grouping columns is uh, similar to a group by the group by columns in SQL. The filters are the where clause, and the measures are aggregations. But the Power BI has uh, taken the the three much further than a simple SQL select statement. And uh, if for people who are wondering, uh, does a Power BI queries have a, a SQL equivalent of the from clause? The answer is no. Uh, Power BI queries, uh, the DAX queries don't need a from clause because the DAX can, engine can automatically uh, deduce uh, which tables are needed and how to join mm -hmm. them because the relationships are created. Of, of course, you can use uh, use relationship and the cross filter functions to modify the join behaviors uh, at the query time. But uh, fundamentally, the from clause is automatically referred. There's no need to explicitly spell it out. That's one of the reasons why DAX queries look a lot, lot smaller compared to equivalent mm -hmm. SQL queries. And also, uh, if you uh, if you look at the 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 the, the, the fundamental trail plus the implicit from class, they are the initial four steps of uh, the. Uh, if you look at the. the uh, the order of uh, operation, uh, order of execution of a SQL select statement, the first four stages are uh, the from class and uh, apply the where class. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, you do the grouping and then you do the aggregation. So this fundamental trail plus the implicit from uh, uh, is exactly the first four stages in the order of execution of a SQL select statement. The rest of the SQL operations like the having, the select list, uh, uh, the order by, the limit, all the other things, uh, uh, they come uh, at a later stage. So that we are not going to talk about it them today. So in DAX, uh, uh, if you are used to writing more complex uh, DAX queries, you know that we do things uh, step by step. So this fundamental trail is always the most important, the first step under the rest of the operations, just like SQL, but uh, we instead of uh, combine them into a single uh, command, we actually do, do them in the follow up steps, which I'm not going to talk about today. So let's look at a concrete example about how these uh, uh, three things, the grouping columns, the filters, and the measures are uh, uh, like uh, shown in the different uh, ways of writing DAX queries. 
So I'll switch over to a desktop and switch over to my desktop. So here in my desktop, I have a very simple uh, visual. I just created a matrix here. In my matrix, I have uh, two columns. One is the year, the other one is the country. So I have a year and a country. I actually only have a single country because I also set a filter that is a, a country equals United States. And then I added two measures. One is called the total quantity. The other one is called the mean price. So this is a very simple matrix. So uh, I set the two filters uh, through two slicers. One is on the right-hand side of the country. Uh, I selected a single country and the color, the product the color, I selected the two colors, blue and red. So this is a very simple uh, uh, visual, okay? And uh, uh, two grouping columns, country and the year, and uh, two filters, one on country, one on color, and uh, two measures, one total quantity, one minimum price. So I get this a small thing, which is a 600. Uh, so uh, so the, the, the three quantity values and the three price values. So this is a very simple thing. So let's see how I can uh, achieve this using a DAX query and uh, all the different ways of writing the same DAX query. So now let's go to the DAX query view, the fourth one on the left. And uh, I have uh, prepared a, a few uh, different ways. So the, the first way is the uh, well-known summarized columns. So uh, in the summarized columns, I can put uh, all three uh, uh, ingredients in the same function. So I have uh, the, the year, and the country as the two grouping columns. And then I have the two filters in the middle. One is the, uh, one is the country here on the country. One is on the color, another filter on the color. And finally, I have the two measures and the total quantity here and the, the minimum price here. Right. So a single function can take in all three uh, uh, elements that are essential to the DAX square. Uh, to any DAX query, if I run it, I will get the, the same values uh, uh, we just saw on the visual, the three quantity values and the three uh, price values. So this is uh, uh, one way of doing it, but uh, there, uh, there are some other ways also doing it. So let's look at uh, another way, which is I'm using the, oh, let me, let, let, uh, I can use the summarize function. So for the summarize function, uh, it uh, also uh, can do a, uh, the, the, the two uh, group eyes, the year and the, oh, sorry. Control D, control D, so let me do this one. So these are the two uh, grouping columns, the year and the country, and then the two measures, the total quantity and the mean price. Since uh, summarize, it takes a table as the first argument and instead of, uh, 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 and also it doesn't take the filter explicitly. So one of the common ways of supplying the filter is to use a, a calculate a table function that can supply the filters uh, 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 from outside function. I can move the inside function too, but there are many different ways. So I'm just choosing one of them to use mm -hmm. calculate the table to supply the two filters, one on country and the one on color. So, so this is another way. If I run this query, I should get exactly the same result. The three quantity values and the three price values. They should look exactly the same as the summarized columns result. And I have I, a quick question though, actually on summarized columns, because I know like earlier on when I was in my, um, going through my DAX education with myself, um, you know, I think a lot of people get tripped up on like, you know, trying to use summarize column in a measure um, rather than summarize, add columns or anything in between and you know, often get getting like an error or something. So like how, how when and where should summarize columns be used and can it be used with measures? Oh, that's an excellent question. Uh, hold on. Hold on. on that. I will, I will answer your question <laughs> later. Okay, yes, perfect. that's an excellent. Actually, uh, I have a good news for you. Oh, okay, so, so okay. now we have seen, we have seen, oh, that's a big hint. <laughs> so now we have seen two ways. One is to use a summarize columns and the other one is using summarize. And then there is a third way, 
uh, I can use the group by function. So uh, to use the group by function, uh, uh, again, yes, I can supply the two uh, uh, grouping columns, the, the year and the country. Uh, the group by functions is very, very similar to the summarize functions. The first uh, argument must be a table. In my case, I uh, happen to use a filter function that uh, so that I can supply the two filters in, uh, uh, as a part of the table argument to the group by function. So the two filters are uh, one on country, one on color, and I already have the two grouping columns. And then I also, and uh, one of the limitations of a group by function, and it's also the main reason why it's not recommended, it doesn't uh, truly support measures. And so, but uh, since my two measures happen to be simple aggregations, so I just use the two uh, aggregations to, uh, one is the sum X over the order quantity, and the other one is using the mean X and uh, over the unit price. So again, it's uh, two grouping and uh, two aggregations and the two filters. So if we run this one, uh, we also get uh, exactly the same result. The fourth method uh, is to use uh, the add columns. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is to use the uh, the add column method. The add column is mainly used to add something to an existing table. So I'm using it to add the two measures. So uh, I use the add columns to add the two measures. One is the total quantity. The other one is the mean price. And then the first argument will be a table. And in the table, I supply the group by columns. So I happen to use the summarize function for that purpose. So I use a summarize just to only use it to provide a group by. This is different from the previous use case of summarize where I supply both the two group bys and the two measures. Here, I'm only using summarize to do the group by on the year and the country. So I already have the two measures added by the add columns. And then I also use uh, uh, the calculated uh, table function to supply the two filters, one on country and one on color. So again, uh, two two measures, two group eyes, and uh, two uh, filter columns. Uh, if we run this one, we should again get the same result. Last but not least, let's look at uh, uh, the the newest addition to DAX, it's not that new anymore because uh, uh, the composite model, which is direct query to the semantic model, uh, was uh, uh, GA'd about a year ago. But uh, in the grand scheme of things, it's still a relatively new feature considering the power uh, it give to the user. So the group uh, cross apply uh, is intended to be an internal function because it was introduced to support uh, uh, Composite models. So the support to this function is still limited, and uh, you, you can still see all these red squigglies because the intelligence, yep. which is the, uh, the the intelligence support, has not been added yet. That's one of the reasons why this uh, uh, DAX query view is still in a public preview, not the GA yet. I believe it should be fixed before GA, and also the public documentation is still being prepared. But uh, Group cross apply function is very similar to summarize columns function. So as you can see, uh, it, it's also uh, take all three ingredients and also in the same order as a summarize columns. And uh, the two group by functions at the beginning, the year and the country, the, the two filters in the middle, uh, one on country, one on color, you notice that, that there is a third filter here, even though it doesn't truly filter anything. There's no like mm -hmm. a subset of values of year, and, uh, and, uh, and, but the two measures are added uh, in the end, which is similar to summarize columns. And this additional filter is because, as I said, this function is an internal function. Therefore, mm -hmm. all the columns must come from the filters. It's one of the uh, constraint. So it's less flexible than summarized columns. Mm -hmm. I just uh, show it because uh, it's also one of the ways 
for you to get exactly the same result. Oh. Okay, so we have seen like a uh, five different ways of uh, uh, achieving exactly the same result. Uh, I want to mention them is because this is uh, one of the reasons why uh, people find the DAX hard is uh, they, they they seem to have uh, like a uh, multiple ways of doing the same thing. And uh, for some users, there's no clear reason why. Uh, uh, there are so many, so much redundancies. So that's exactly what uh, today's uh, presentation is about. I want to give people a little bit of history about each method and each function so you can understand the why and why we recommend mm -hmm. uh, one of them, which is the summarize columns uh, approach. Yep. So let me, let me go back to my... Uh, I definitely found that to be the easiest to write because right? it's just, you know, there's there's no extra functions. You just you pick whatever columns you want from the model, build the table out, summarizes it up. Um, but it, it it's, as you know, historically had had some nuances of like where you're supposed to use it that um, has, has tripped people up, I think, over the years. I would say easy to write is definitely one of the uh, most important, one of the important reasons why this is recommended. But it's, of course, it's more than that. But for other people who, uh, people, uh, uh, humans are uh, like a animal of habits, right? So you can, if you look at the other <laughs> yeah. approaches, they are not too bad. I agree, they are more verbose less elegant, but they're not too bad. Once you get used to it and you find mm -hmm. out that it's to solve a, almost all your problems, especially the initial problems, then people tend to get you like a, get a, like a stuck with it, right? So because yeah. they already fully understand the nuances of a, a particular approach, so they want to stick to it instead of learning a new way to, to switch over to a different approach. There's the, um, I, I'm sure you know, you know, that like that iconic book from the 90s, the who, who moved my cheese. Um, it's the <laughs> whole idea of like, it's we're even though a better approach might come out, it's, it's hard and it takes it, we're slower at it because it's new to learning. Like, no, 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 I don't have time for that. I'm just going to do whatever I've been doing for the last 20 years because I'm, it's, it's my pattern and I'm used to it and I can get it done faster by 5 PM rather than retraining myself on whatever this new fancy thing is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, I remember it took me a couple of years to convince a run, one of my relatives to finally adopt the Google map, to, 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 <laughs> to switch away from GPS and just to adopt the Google map, even though the latter is much, much, much faster to set up. So yeah, people, <laughs> it's hard to, to break habits, I know. Exactly. Okay, so we, 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 we look at the, the five different options, right? We can use, uh, so it's not just only one function. We saw that uh, we need a combination of uh, a function plus otherwise, but I just want to single out the most distinct feature in that uh, particular approach. So number one, summarize columns. Number two, uh, using summarize uh, to get the grouping columns and the measures and they use calculate table to supply the filters. We can use uh, the group by function to get uh, both the simple aggregations and the grouping columns. And uh, we can use add columns to add measures and uh, to, uh, to, to some, uh, uh, using some other approach like a summarize to actually, or you can use group by to generate uh, the, the grouping columns and uh, the filters can be supplied either through the filter function or the calculate the table function. And uh, the newest addition to the family is the uh, function that they internally used to generate uh, queries for direct query to semantic model, the group cross apply that uh, seems to be uh, uh, almost like an identical twin to summarize columns, except for some uh, small differences uh, 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 requirement uh, where the grouping columns uh, must be uh, come from. And uh, so today we want to uh, uh, look at uh, like compare these different approaches uh, from the historical perspective and uh, to understand why the summarize columns approach is the, 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 the right way to go. Okay, so number one is the official approach, the summarize columns. Okay, so uh, the, if you actually are uh, deep, if you deep dive into uh, Power BI, uh, go look uh, under the cover. Uh, many people have already uh, captured uh, the queries actually generated by all the different individuals, and uh, the DAX query will definitely make it easier. Mm -hmm. You you should notice that the summarize columns is the fundamental. Uh, 
uh, function Power BI itself uses uh, to generate uh, almost all the DAX queries. So uh, let's uh, look at uh, the one we just, uh, let's look at uh, the the visual we just, uh, uh, the, the simple matrix visual, if we capture the underlying DAX query, you will see the uh, summarized columns. So let's go to the performance analyzer and uh, we can start a recording. If I refresh the visuals and uh, I have the matrix uh, right here, okay. and now we have that we can run it directly in DAX query review. That's really convenient now. So if I capture it, and, uh, that shortcut's back. fantastic. Yeah, that that, that uh, is, uh, saves a lot of time. You don't have to mm -hmm. copy and paste around. And then if we, so first of all, it's, it's a much bigger query. Okay? But uh, if we go to the beginning, you should see there's something called, uh, there's a variable called, where is my cursor? Where did my cursor go? Okay, let me start. I found my cursor. So uh, in the middle, you should see a variable a variable called a double underscore DS0 core, and it is defined using the summarize uh, columns function. And then these are the two grouping columns, the year, the year and the country. There will be two filters and come in as variables. But if we look at the variable, uh, you will see that, for example, the variable right before, right uh, above us is the one on the country, is the filter on the country column. And the other one is on the year, uh, even further above, and uh, the two measures uh, right here. So, so this is a, so since a, Power BI is using summarized columns to generate the core. Uh, obviously, there is a good reason uh, we recommend it to the users. And uh, if you look at the, the rest of the steps in the query, they are all building. So if I search for this variable, the DS0 core, double underscore in front of it, if I search for it, you will see that uh, the rest of the uh, intermediate steps are all built on top of this uh, DS0 core uh, variable. And so uh, then what, one thing that I'll I'll just uh, somebody mentioned it in the in the, the comments in terms of filtering the like years ago when I when I was looking at this and reading a couple of blogs like one thing I love to do is actually like those complex filtered tables putting that in a, a declared variable and then just calling it um, like all the other ways to use variables it it really cleans up r reading through your logic when you separate the, the the two of them so even when I'm writing measures I will often declare my a filter table uh, as a variable and then just call upon it in a calculate function or something. Um, Absolutely. Just, it just really does add to, to the readability and it helps break up those chunks rather than having a giant block of code. Yes. So variables uh, is great about uh, there. There's a, like everything is great about variable except for its name. It should not be called variable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, we, but back then we were we were debating and the lat we should have used a lat or a const or a var, and then I lost the the battle on the naming because I I tend to say okay let me because you you didn't know that uh, I need to I need to convince other people that we need to take a variable as a feature. Back then, actually, it, there was a strong pushback to uh, introduce as a feature. They said, oh, let's, let's just confine it to only the query. I said, no, 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 no. Let's allow variables everywhere, including in the measures. And uh, so at least I win that. I won that battle. But uh, uh, the naming battle, unfortunately, it's, it just <laughs> stuck with the variables, even though it does it, it not. It is a little restrictive in terms of what, like, what you can declare, because it's not just a variable, it's a table. Like, that's a lot of stuff. but. It yes, was one of my favorite yes. inventions in, in ads to, in the last eight years when, when they released that uh, with, with one of the updates. So many measures instantly just became faster when you started to be able to use those, especially with like switch statements. Uh, I, I yes. love variables. Yeah. Yes. And, and also make it debugging so much easier, right? You can just <laughs> exactly. return any of the intermediate variable mm -hmm. as the variable result. Result. Of final. Yeah, yes. yeah. Like the Marco and, and Alberto blogged on that years ago. And like that is exclusively the pattern that I use for every measure that has a variable is you always have a result variable so you can swap. Uh, and uh, so 
uh, the the reason why I call the, the 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 grouping columns and the filters and the measures the fundamental trail is because uh, the result of uh, that fundamental trail is used to uh, to feed uh, all the other uh, calculation steps uh, for the rest of the query. Okay, so the final query does not return that. If I run it, uh, I will not get exactly the same thing. Actually, I'll get two different results. One is just the country. The other one is uh, uh, more like the things we just saw. That is the year, but this time without the country and with something called the column index, and then the the three values for the quantity and the three values for the price. So you can see the the final query shape is not exactly the the, the the result of the summarized columns, but uh, it is the result of the summarized columns that is used to build the other things that eventually returned as uh, the query row sets. Okay, let's go back to. The... So, the most important thing we 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 know the, the one of the key reasons why summarized columns is uh, the most uh, uh, is the recommended way to to build the core of your query mm -hmm. is because uh, Power BI is using it to build its core. And uh, in the future, when you are debugging your Power BI, uh, like a, close it. Uh, in the future, when you, when you debug uh, like a, uh, some sum of your visuals, and then you can use the performance analyzer to capture the DAX query underneath. And then you should, uh, most of the time, so it should be this variable name. You should always look for this variable name and uh, the, uh, double underscore DS zero core and almost uh, every query has it. The vast majority, the mass of the non-trivial ones, they almost always have it. And this supplies all the data that is used to shape your visual. Even though your uh, visual may eventually not display all the data, for example, there can be sampling, okay. right? So for the line chart, it cannot fit all the data points if you have too many data points, but still the data points are actually uh, returned by the DS0 core. It's just like uh, the rest of the uh, follow-up steps will do additional sampling, either using a top end or using one of the sample functions to uh, reduce uh, the total amount of data uh, eventually displayed on the visual. But on the calcula calculation engine side, the DAX engine side, all the data points are prepared and they are uh, stored inside this variable. And uh, then, if summarized columns is, is uh, so uh, essential, why is uh, why there are still people are considering the alternative approaches? As I said, mm -hmm. uh, one is the habit, but why do they have the habit in the first place? This is exactly the question you asked uh, uh, just a few minutes ago. Summarized columns cannot be used in measures. Yeah. And uh, so people are forced uh, to uh, use other approaches uh, to produce uh, similar effects. They, as, a, as a, one of the intermediate steps, they need to build a, 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 a small table as a part of their measure calculation that uh, have some grouping columns, apply some filters, or just have some implicit filters picked up from the evaluation context. And then they want to calculate some aggregations or some measures as a part of the intermediate step. But since the summarized columns was is banned inside the measure, and that they are forced to learn the other approaches. Once they learn the other approaches, they maybe say, OK, maybe I can just use it for uh, DAX query uh, uh, in general. Uh, so that's one of the most, uh, in my opinion, potentially one of the most important reasons. Okay, But uh, the good news is, I hope that uh, uh, there will be some New Year's gift uh, in com coming up to 2024. And finally, this restriction will be lifted, hopefully in the first, oh. in the early part of 2024. I mean, that, that's some crossed. of the, yeah, I'd say like, so that's some of the more exciting news that I've heard in a while. Cause it, <clears throat> it's the easiest approach that I've found of all the patterns that you've shown for somebody who's just getting familiar with DAX. Like it, it just, it lets you pick a column from anywhere. You don't have to do a measure and have a max or a min of another column to add the special ones. You just select the measures from anything that's related in the model, build your, your table. And it's the easiest way to get started, but you know, you, you get those little, um, uh, you get the, some, um, syntax errors uh, try, trying to use that. So if that actually can come through, I, I think that will certainly make the, the the bar for intermediate DAX will lower even more um, for, for, for people needing to use that because it, it's just the, mo it's the most intuitive, uh, in my opinion, to, to generating those like custom filter tables that you need to. That's yeah. awesome. 
it, yeah, if anything else, it will definitely simplify the syntax, right? Because uh, the function yes. takes in the the trail, uh, mm -hmm. uh, all as it's an argument, so it becomes a, a, a more elegant and a simplified uh, expression. I mean, By the way, it's syntax yeah. sugar, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's yeah, it's actually more than syntax sugar, but uh, for the vast majority of the basic scenarios, yes, it definitely is a syntax yeah. sugar. First, yeah, and. So uh, one of the reasons why we have all these different alternatives is uh, it's not just uh, 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 like a simplicity of a syntax. Uh, more importantly, uh, is because of uh, uh, semantics and the performance. Okay? So summarized columns is, uh, is recommended uh, also because it has the relatively the most correct semantics. By correct, uh, I'm not talking about the uh, a box that uh, it's, it, it doesn't return the result that it designed to return. That's not what I meant. I mean, even when it returned the result as designed, it may not be as intuitive or as uh, understandable to the end users. Uh, Summarize columns has the list of uh, list of such side effects compared to the, all the other approaches. So this is also another reason why we recommend you to use uh, summarized columns. Uh, uh, as we already seen that uh, all the different approaches uh, for basic things, they they all return exactly the same result that they work. And uh, one of the great things about uh, DAX is uh, we do our best to give uh, every function to its uh, full potential. Okay, we don't put in artificial hard limit saying, oh, I'm going to raise an error simply because this is not my primary usage scenario. We said, okay, as long as this function makes sense from that function perspective, we'll support it. We will fully implement the functionalities for you to use. That's why no matter which option people have chosen, they found themselves, they can go very far with that approach. So they can solve almost all their initial problems. So they never realize that there can be some some like a potential, like a limitations are lurking under the uh, surface, uh, like a further down the road. When you run into more complex scenarios, you may run into those kind of things. So this is what I call the, the semantic issue of different approaches. And uh, among all the different approaches, uh, summarized columns has the list of that things. So you will not get uh, like unpleasant surprises later on when you are, let's say you get used to use summarized columns, uh, then you started adding arbitrary combinations of uh, grouping mm -hmm. columns, filters, and the measures, and you will have the least amount of surprises. But it's not fully immune yet, and uh, summarized mm -hmm. columns do have one uh, semantic issue, and uh, the SQL BI team has uh, published a, a good blog mm -hmm. post about it. It's called the auto-exist behavior of uh, uh, summarized columns. Why do I always lose my cursor the first time? Let me put it in the middle. I'll uh, see if oh. I can get the, the link to that and I'll post it. Oh, here we go. Dax Auto Exist. Um, yeah. Was this a recent post or one from like a couple of years ago? It's from a couple of years ago. Okay, yeah. then I, I, so I got the link. It is, uh, it is, Summarize Commons uh, uh, actually uh, is uh, doing the designed behavior, but the designed behavior is simply just doesn't make sense to many users who have a, uh, like a use uh, like a certain combinations of uh, grouping columns and uh, a certain type of measure expressions and uh, that is but uh, still it's not uh, that uncommon actually every single year uh, Alberto or Marco will send me a new incident from their customers saying well it's not returning the expected result I would say 80 percent of the time is because of the auto exist behavior so okay. it's, it's very okay. surprising that uh, the function can return without that way. So this is another potentially good news. Uh, hopefully this problem will finally be solved in 2024 sometime. Hopefully. So I'm guessing then like basically it's, it's when eventually it's getting used inside of a measure, it, um, there will probably be some things happening in the back end where it recognizes that and it's accounting for this auto exist scenario. Like that's, that's what's been needing to get patched, so to speak. No, no, no. Or to be able no, to. That's okay. not what I mean. So why I say if hopefully it will finally be solved in 2024, I mean, it will mm -hmm. solve in both the measures. That's a separate mm -hmm. thing. So f first thing, we hope 2024 will bring up good news that you can finally use summarized columns in measures. Yeah. Second is, uh, regardless where summarized columns is used in measures or in queries, hopefully we have a solution to the auto exist. Ah, okay. Yeah. Just, just okay. Glo globally. Okay, perfect. Yes, globally. Yes. Okay. So, but uh, we have to be 
where you, you you can understand why we are cautious about it because uh, summarized columns is such a fundamental part of Power BI, and uh, there are so many uh, existing report out there. We have to be very cautious about uh, changing the default behavior of the function. Right? It has mm -hmm. a huge impact potentially, even though the combination is not that common. But uh, I wouldn't say when when you have uh, hundreds of uh, millions of uh, like a uh, queries running every day chances <laughs> yeah. are even one percent is a very big number right and uh, if, it, yeah, if even if down if it's 0 0.1 percent and uh, so that's uh, 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 the first option the second option is to use a calculated table to supply the filters and use a summarize to supply the grouping columns and the measures the reason why this approach uh, uh, exists uh, is uh, because uh, they can be used uh, to uh, to create those temp tables, temp results inside the measures. And also, this method works in almost all the cases very similar to summarize columns. It's because it's actually how uh, Power BI, at least the initial implementation of Power BI, actually generate the queries. The, the query generated is not what I showed uh, in the report. Let me go back to my... Uh, so. What I showed is uh, I use a, a I use a calculated table uh, to supply the th uh, to supply the filters and use a summarize and then the first argument is a table and uh, for simplicity I simply use the uh, a simple table name but that's not how the actual query is generated if you look at uh, 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 something that is uh, closer to what's actually generated back then uh, during the power pivot and the power view error of uh, Power BI, uh, the query looks like this. Uh, this is not, again, this is not the full query. I'm only highlighting uh, the, the essential part of it. So again, I'm using the, the back then, we're using the calculated table to uh, we're using calculated table to supply the the filters. We're using summarize to supp uh, to supply the grouping columns, uh, which are here and here. The year and the country. The measures are total quantity and the the, the minimum price. But the the table that uh, is fed to the summarize function is actually more complex. So it, it might, it's not exactly the same, but it's very similar to what uh, was generated back then is this part. So we're actually using a generator function to combine the individual grouping columns. One is the, the, the year column, the other one is the country columns. And mm -hmm. then we are repeating the measures here. You can tell the measures here. And we are using a filter function to do it back then. So this this is a more explicit way of uh, of applying the implicit what we call the the non empty filter okay so the yep. non empty filter is saying the combination of a year and a country uh only for the combinations that uh, at least one of the measures have a non blank value so back then yep. the non empty filter uh, was explicit Today, in summarize, it's baked into the implicit semantics of summarized columns, but the, uh, not in the initial version of uh, Power BI queries. Mm, okay. Uh, so that was when the, uh, that was uh, the old ways of generating query back then. So, uh, why did we switch away from that approach to summarize columns? Uh, uh, we actually uh, we discovered both semantics issues and performance issues. As you can uh, you can already tell that uh, the measures are repeated twice, right? Mm -hmm. So one so the same set of measures are uh, uh, are supplied twice. One as a part of the filter condition to the non-empty filter. The other is uh, through the uh, the the final output of uh, the summarize function. So this is not elegant for sure, but it's more than just uh, uh, syntactic uh, uh, simplicity. It's actually caused uh, uh, significant performance issues as well. So mm. we have uh, both performance issues. 
by the duplication of the major references in different parts of the same query, we also have issues with semantics. It returns, uh, uh, it has a much worse version of auto exist behavior in a sense, uh, where we sometimes call it clustering behavior. Okay, so this uh, query pattern unfortunately have a both a uh, severe semantics issues and the performance issues in more complex scenarios. That's why it's difficult to uh, fix both because semantics is something like you don't want to just change uh, randomly. That's one of the main reasons we introduced the summarize function, summarize columns functions in a project internally codenamed the, the SuperDAX project. <laughs> so we, yeah, we did that, and uh, the super. So so this is a uh, so uh, for for the early adopters of Power Pivot and Power View, you know that is not nearly as popular as uh, Power BI today. But this is also the reason, one of the reasons we we it's a surprise to even us that the Power BI get uh, like a wide adoption uh, so fast because we had a, a very slow adoption back then in the Power Pivot and Power View days. But uh, the good news is uh, we learned a lot from that, including uh, that uh, what kind of a query behavior and the query performance is desirable to the user. And we started this super DAX. We introduced the uh, uh, summarize columns. We introduced the variable feature, for example. And we, uh, it's actually a multi-year effort. But the good news for us is uh, when we finally finished the project, uh, the new Power BI was launched. And uh, so this uh, like a, uh, improvement, even though uh, the, the, initial, the, the, the initial Power BI, after it's been relaunched from Power Pivot and Power View, it become a standalone product. The initial Power BI can only do very simple things like a basic aggregations and the basic grouping columns. So the old one does not even have the uh, the semantic issue. You will not even be able to see the, the semantic mm -hmm. issue because you can't even create it. You couldn't even create a measure back then. But uh, the performance, the boost alone was one of the main reasons why Power BI was popular even out of the gate. And uh, you, you didn't know. Back then, I, when I was playing the, 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 the initial version of Power BI after it became a, a standalone product, because the client team have to completely rewrite the entire client. So they, a lot of the old optimizations was not picked up in the initial release. Okay. So back then, I remember if you have like a 10 pages in your report and each page have a three measures, uh, have three visuals, then you, uh, no matter what you do on the canvas, like I just drag one visual from the left side of the canvas to the right side, all 30 queries will be executed. So back oh, then- like, so the, it, it, was, it was loading all pages I, at the same time? It was running all queries behind the scene. Oh my goodness. I, I mean, I, I, rem I was using Power BI Designer. I forgot about that. Um, that that's <laughs> so, it, wow. Yeah, so the <laughs> super DAX, uh, uh, at least the performance the performance improvement the aspect of super dax uh was a really uh, one of the uh, reasons why people don't reject the power bi immediately S think yeah, about how fair. slow things could be right no matter what you do i simply resize the size of the window i didn't change any data or i just uh, swapped the order of two columns no matter what you do every single query of uh, every single visual on every single page visible or not i re-executed in the back end I feel like yeah. there's some report there's some reports built today that if that happened, I, the the computer would catch fire <laughs> if, if every <laughs> DAX measure tried to run like that. And it's a good improvement. Yeah. yeah, I didn't realize that was uh, an issue so very early on in the stage yeah, that was yeah, quickly yeah. addressed with Super so, DAX. Yeah, very few people even noticed that the slowness. And one one reason is because back then the data volume was a small and the, the queries yeah. are simple. There's no complex measures, but uh, still. When you run 30 queries for every single UI gesture, you will you will be annoyed if the performance is a real problem to you. Yeah. So yeah, come back to here. So uh, so the reason why uh, this uh, calculate table plus summarize is a uh, one of the popular options out there is because uh, they can be used to recreate pretty much the same result uh, inside your measure definition, and also they are very in terms of capabilities, they are very close to summarize columns, okay, without the constraint of uh, uh, not uh, uh, permitted in measures. And, uh, but still, we want you to adopt the summarize columns because exactly it's because uh, 
uh, 10 years ago, we discovered that uh, there are some issues when uh, calculations, when the combinations of the trail become complex enough, you will run into like a problems that uh, you may scratch your head for days, if not weeks. And uh, to save you all the trouble, just stay with uh, summarize columns so that you don't even uh, run into that problem in the first place. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but uh, it doesn't mean we want to deprecate the summarize function. Even though summarize function was invented uh, for query generation, we, we recommended that uh, you use uh, the restricted version of summarize. So summarize as I said, uh, it can supply both the grouping columns and the measures. We said that the measure part is where the more, like depending on the measure expression, the more like a uh, uh, complex, uh, a behavior may manifest, but uh, if you only use it as a simple way to generate the valid combinations of uh, grouping yep. columns, then uh, use a summarize. Uh, you, you should summarize still use it, but, yes, yes, just use it to generate the combination of uh, grouping columns. That, uh, that is a valid usage. And the group by function, why we invented the group by function is because uh, uh, Group by function was also a part of the SuperDAX uh, project. It was used as a function strictly for the UI to do some additional aggregations on top of the core results. So summarize columns is going to the physical table to, to do the grouping and the aggregations. And the, the group by, the purpose is it was taking the result of summarized columns, which is stored in a variable, it's, it's an intermediate step, and then it's no longer a physical table, and then the group by function can, can be used to do additional aggregations, strictly back then for the purpose of, uh, let's say, uh, for a line chart, and they want to calculate uh, the maximum value and the minimum value in order to calculate the range of the axis, those kind of things. So that was the uh, original reason to introduce this function. But unfortunately, for people coming from the SQL background, relational database background, group by may be the first function they run into because it has a really nice name, right? It, it maps exactly to the concept of group by in relational algebra. So, so I, I, I'm afraid many people want uh, want to use this function simply because they like the name of it. But and also it can do for the basic aggregations. Uh, even though it is, uh, uh, if we look at uh, uh, the, the the syntax of the group by. Uh, it, it, it requires, uh, uh, let's say, instead, it only require it only why the first time working. So it only uh, takes aggregation functions. It also doesn't take the simple version. It requires the X version of the aggregation functions, and uh, because you always have to say the current group, and then mm -hmm. uh, it, you. It can supply the grouping columns under the basic aggregations. It's more verbose in terms of uh, syntax, but uh, some people like it because of its name. And uh, the reason why I want to mention that it was introduced uh, exactly to do the post-processing step of summarized columns is uh, even though, let's say, I only want to use it to do the uh, what uh, the previous uh, the summarized approach uh, is doing is the summarize was doing something similar as well, right? It's providing yeah. the group the grouping functions as well as the measures, and the group by is doing the same. But the summarize at least uh, it is uh, friendly to the storage engine. By storage engine, I mean the vertipack engine or the direct uh, the direct query to the relational database. So um, fundamentally, the DAX engine is sitting on top of a query accelerator. So at the bottom layer, the vertipack engine, that what, uh, let's only talk about the import for the time being, the vertipack engine is like a fast, like a, it's, 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 it can leverage, it's much closer to the hardware, therefore it can deliver the supreme uh, performance. And the DAX engine is mostly to, manage, to do task management, to make, ensure the full feature and uh, the full functionality while the, the vertipack engine can do the like a raw, like a churning of the code, like the CPU, where okay, in the future yeah, yeah. potentially GPU churning and to, to produce the actual result as fast as possible. So summarize and both the summarize and the summarize columns are optimized to push as much as possible to the vertipack engine uh, or to the uh, relational database, but the group by function doesn't do that. So 
if you use a group by on smaller data set, you would not notice any difference. But on the uh, bigger data set, even if you do exactly the same, even if you only do basic things, the performance can be substantially worse compared to the other approaches. Okay. So the end, and so you're saying the, the uh, versus the two, the group group by against hundreds, billions of rows will um, will aggregate or go through, uh, materialize the data faster. Uh, the group by will be slower because it's slower. not pushed okay. the, pushed the down to the vertibac engine. Gotcha. While the summarize, what, what would be your use cases to recommend? Would there ever be a use case to recommend that then over summarize if it's less efficient? I personally would not recommend it at all. Okay. As I said, many people discovered it by its friendly name. So I'm done. so so this is really supposed to be an internal function, mostly for mm -hmm. query generation. Do some post processing of the core result gotcha. during the query generation. Yeah. Yep, makes sense. Okay. And the add columns is a very popular. Not because uh, syntax <laughs> is better. It's mainly because if you look at its syntax. If you oh, we're almost at the time. Hey, so we're, if you, we're fine if you need to go over a bit, so no, no worries. Okay, thanks. So look at the syntax. It added the, so it takes a, a, a table as the first argument. In my case, I happen to use summarize. It can be any other table. You can supply the filter directly there if you want. And then it added the two measures. Therefore, unlike all the previous functions that the grouping columns and the measures are fit into the same function, this guy force you to separate the evaluation of the grouping columns if you have any or filters if you mm -hmm. have any versus the measures. So exactly because of this like a like a physical separation of the arguments, it has a some it has a less side effects. So in some more complex measures, sometimes you run into those like auto exist behavior that both yeah. summarize and the sum, like, summarize columns has, but the add columns doesn't have that problem. So, so that's why sometimes people find the add columns to be uh, a good way. Again, is uh, you can use it to author expressions inside the measure. It's not restricted there. And then it also doesn't have some of those side effects simply because if you look at it, the way the arguments are passed to it, the tables where the group by, the grouping columns are calculated is already, it's a separate argument. It's not a part, it's, it's not the function's job to do the group by, right? The function is only to add additional columns. And then in my case, if I'm adding the measures, then the measure, then the, this is like a complex interaction between certain combinations of grouping columns and the measures, it doesn't apply to, uh, to add columns. So in that sense, uh, it's, it's a good thing, but uh, of, of, first of all, it's still too verbose in my opinion, but more importantly <laughs> is because it doesn't support uh, uh, the implicit uh, auto exist. So for many people who are not aware that auto exists, uh, not, uh, not auto exists, the, 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 the implicit uh, uh, non-empty filter, mm -hmm. right? So, 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 so for many people who are not aware of the, the, the importance of that filter, they may run into some surprises and uh, when they use add columns. So uh, the SQL BI team has published the articles about the correct pattern. So you have to explicitly spell out the non-empty filter like uh, the old uh, Power Query, uh, uh, the old way of doing uh, things that where you explicitly uh, spell out the, uh, the, the filters here. Oh, if you want to use add columns, you have to be more careful to supply your own non-empty non filter uh, if it's a two columns from different uh, dimension tables, like the grouping columns coming from two. If you only have a single grouping column, that tend to be okay most of the times. And uh, you may see some unpleasant blanks, but it's not not big deal. But if you are not careful to, uh, to have uh, grouping columns from two different dimension tables and you don't explicitly supply your own non-empty filter, you may get a huge nasty cross-drawing that... Uh, uh, that uh, you don't yeah, know quick that follow -up, apply. Uh, quick follow-up question from somebody in the chat related to <clears throat> um, summarize. So would you ever select a combination of like summarizing the data first in uh, in a uh, and declare it as a as a as a table with a with a variable and then using group by for further grouping? Um, or would that again like would you be concerned of performance issues versus 
some other approach um uh, uh, uh you you uh, I, I in that case i wouldn't worry about the performance because by defining okay, a variable you are potentially already uh, doing the heavy uh, lifting already in the first variable but uh, since a summarize can be used as a group by itself you are already using summarize you can just keep using summarize to do the actual group by. okay so we're well, like, rather than having to switch functions you could just you could yeah, just yeah. you could nest it if you needed to okay yeah, you don't need to uh, do another group by using a different function. You can just use a summarize to do the group by. So what I'm trying to say is that we, we still uh, want people to use a summarize, but uh, use it as a group by function instead of as a pure group by function. Don't add measures to it. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, and also add columns. Uh, well, it's, uh, it's not as optimized as a summarized columns in the sense that a summarized columns, when everything's a simple, filters are simple, measures are simple, the model is a simple, it, it, can uh, it basically can generate a single uh, storage agent query. Basically, if you direct query, it it, the entire summarized columns can be translated into a single SQL select statement. But the add columns uh, is never uh, intended for that purpose, so it will always generate the two or more uh, storage engine queries. So it has uh, performance issues as well, even if you supply your own uh, non-empty filter. Hmm. Okay. So, so the, hmm. the the in the end, summarize columns is a recommended way to go, and especially if next year we finally remove the constraint okay. that is not allowed in measures. And uh, the final option is uh, the group cross apply. This one, uh, I don't wait, I just want to mention it because now that you can easily capture queries, you may actually capture some queries that use this function. This is also internally how uh, AS engine generate, uh, uh, translate the summarize columns when it cannot be pushed uh, as is to uh, direct queries uh, to a, a remote AS engine, right? So, uh, uh, some people may say, oh, can I use this because uh, it has a different, it ha it's very similar to summarize columns in the syntax, right? And uh, so it, it's, it has a little bit of inconvenience that uh, uh, all the grouping columns uh, must come from the uh, uh, all the filters, so even you don't, even if you are not trying to filter anything, you still have to supply a filter just so that you can use a grouping column. That alone is just not a, a convenient enough. But but uh, on the other hand, it seems to have a, a very similar syntax and behavior to summarize columns, especially in simple cases. That is indeed true, and it actually uh, the reason why we are we have to introduce this function as a part of the composite model work, the direct query to semantic model work is exactly because uh, uh, it has uh, some semantic uh, differences between uh, this function and uh, the summarized columns and uh, internally, because uh, now we're talking about, uh, we have an internal representation of a more complex query structure, the, a more gen generic data structure, but we need to uh, push the calculation to a remote AS engine instead of doing it locally because it's a direct query to uh, AS uh, in that scenario, therefore, uh, we have to introduce a new function because we have to reflect the internal uh, behavior and the semantics uh, when we try to evaluate this grouping and these uh, measures and these uh, filters. So, uh, but uh, again, uh, let's leave it to be an internal function. There's no need to learn a new thing. From user's perspective, you should stick with the summarize columns as much as possible. And uh, it's only for the uh, truly advanced developers that they want to learn everything about the DAX, so they may want to uh, uh, delve deeper into uh, this kind of like uh, internal functions. So I wouldn't recommend people spend too much time on this, try to figure out uh, how this function works. Okay, summarize columns should be sufficient. It'll be very exciting once that uh, finally comes out. I'm, quite a few people in the chat are uh, quite eager to, to to see that happen. Okay. So, uh, so that's all the different patterns. So again, uh, multiple options, but in the and the summarized columns is the recommended way. And uh, for people uh, on a related question, for people to say, can I supply the filter used to calculate the table? or calculate uh, in general, or use the filter function. I just want to let people know that uh, these two functions, the calculate uh, filters and the filter filters are semantically different, okay? So when we uh -huh. design the DAX programming language, the calculate the table, we have a pre-filter 
behavior. By pre-filter, we mean the filter are semantically supposed to be applied at the leaf level. So if you have a more complex expression tree, the filter is applied first at the leaf level nodes, and then the result is propagated up uh, toward the, uh, the, mm -hmm. the top of the expression tree. While the filter function by design having a post filter semantics, which means that the table expression is supposed to be evaluated first, and then the filter is applied afterwards. <laughs> but since the filter is such a popular function, we actually do some deep analysis. We say, oh, a lot of times we can actually push the filter down. We can apply, obviously you want to uh, apply the filter as early as possible. So we said, okay, as long as uh, the final result stays the same, uh, we will push the filter down uh, whenever possible. But just remember, they are semantically different. We have a complex expression. The calculated table one is supposed to be, the filter is applied at the leaf level and by design and the filter is applied afterwards. So for people who are asking, how do I do the having clause, uh, uh, like in SQL select statement, having is obviously a post filter behavior, right? You have the fundamental trio to produce the initial uh, group by and aggregations and the having yep. is supposed to apply afterwards. And then this is where the filter function should be used to remove unwanted values from that. By the way, unfortunately- well, there's, there's, a, there's a few situations yeah. of that, like. <clears throat> the the auto optimization i i think in the last couple of years there's been definitely some pretty big improvements uh with with that is you you identify the, the the a bad pattern where somebody is writing something that gives the right number but it's not performant and the engine recognizes oh like we can do this function instead of that you're going to get the exact same result but this will be three times faster because you're not materializing nearly as much data in the storage engine you are right. You are exactly right. So in that sense, the DAX is very similar to SQL. They are declarative languages. So they declare the semantics, the intention of the user, the actual engine, the actual execution order is left to the DAX engine to, to mm -hmm. do the best possible. So we, yes, we do a lot of optimization. Actually, the vast majority of the development work in DAX engine is optimization. It's like uh, for all the equivalent results, can we choose a different execution plan to uh, to achieve the results faster? Yes, exactly as you said. We have done a lot of such optimizations over the years. So last but not least, many of the functions that we talked about today have been uh, like uh, blocked by the SQL BI team. So I put uh, provided some of the links. So if you look at one of the, some of the behaviors or the performance issues I alluded to today, but without getting into concrete examples, and, and you can find many of those examples from the blog post and by the SQL BI team and also by other folks, by the way. And uh, But I just only listed a few uh, links from the SQL BI team. And I just yeah, made sure to drop all of those in the, the chat as well, so everybody has those uh -huh. links. If, um, and I'll I'll update the description for for the video, so those will be listed in some of the additional resources for people to check out. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That that concludes uh, my presentation today. Uh, any any no, questions? This is, from... Yeah. If people have any remaining questions that we haven't gotten or gone through uh, throughout this, uh, feel free to drop them in again. But otherwise, uh, this is. Each time you're on, it's always an informative and very deep dive session. Um, and I even come out learning quite a few new things about some of the the, the nuances between these. Because you know, I think a, a decent number of us who are intermediate with DAX, we know at least from whatever SQL BI is blogged about with the um, the summarize and add columns. But just like how some of those evaluate between that, the group by function, when and where to use those. But for sure, the biggest and most exciting thing is the, the fact that you mentioned that at some point in 2024, once um, all the you know, back end stuff gets fixed is we will finally get a chance to use summarized columns in measures. And um, I know anybody who cuts their teeth with DAX at all is going to be very happy to start using that as a common pattern um, in DAX. So that will be absolutely fantastic. I'm very excited for that. Yeah, I'm excited for that too. There are sometimes when I'm writing measures, I just find that <laughs> without the summarized columns, it's, it's, it's just like a, such a pain to write a certain a very basic things. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's... Although the a few extra steps and, and layers that we have. Uh, actually, I do have a question from from Greg uh, Kramer. So, uh, how much are you using GitHub Copilot to create code in your daily work? And um, that's a very interesting question. Uh, the GitHub, the Copilot, uh, uh, have a different knowledge on different programming languages, and uh, it's it's excellent in Python. I would say. Okay. So. 
I found that it's a invaluable companion when I'm doing Python, uh, when I'm writing Python code. It's just great at it. For some other programming languages, it's not, it's not quite there yet. So yeah, I do, exactly. I do. I, I feel like the, yeah. yeah, the, the, the big, the big ones, it's helpful for sure. But the, the one, cause I've, I've used some AI assisted stuff, copilots and others to, for DAX and all those, but the problem is unless it can actually connect to the model and you get the, you get the, the, um, the autocomplete for a lot of the fields, it's harder to write blindly for, for you know, I, I've tried a few, um, code is code assists for power, uh, not for power query, but just for DAX and. The, that that one downside is it just it won't do an autocomplete for your fields and it's that slows me down enough that I I've I've not used those but uh, there have been people who've done some free plugins with ChatGPT to help write uh, uh, DAX in Visual Studio but it, it doesn't get the rest of the, the of the model context Actually, or like whether or not a relationship has stuff go ahead yeah I I agree I I I believe ChatGPT is not there yet uh, for DAX mm -hmm. development it's, well to be honest the DAX is quite new it's changing. Like a, in the recent <laughs> days, <Yeah>. right? <laughs> recent years. So clearly, their training cannot be uh, so up to date uh, compared to many, many of the other programming languages. Yeah. And more importantly, the amount of uh, literature about DAX on the internet uh, is nowhere com nowhere close to uh, how uh, the other programming language. Like there's so many code bases out there, the open source code bases. So so there's just not nearly enough training materials. So this actually is one of the research projects I'm doing nowadays. I'm, I'm looking into like, a, because internally we can build up many uh, of the training literatures to say if we can uh, enhance the existing large language models to, to help on the DAX development. But, but just by looking at my personal experience, uh, like using uh co like uh, the python copilot i mm -hmm. would uh, i i i i am i'm a firm believer that, that this is definitely doable for dax so this will be the automax oh, yeah. like a developer helper that uh, python is a uh, substantially more complex than dax and uh, it can do a very decent job in python so there's no reason why it cannot do the same thing for dax yeah i mean i I've, I've had a couple people on the stream that have demoed some of that like code assist that's built into fabric for spark and all those others and I can imagine someday Microsoft is, and with you and your team or whomever, will will eventually have something in Power BI Desktop where there'll be a similar little. If you're writing a measure, there something will will get better at that um, the quick measure type stuff. But it will just. I see you're trying to do a pattern. Maybe instead of using uh, having a measure inside of summarized columns, perhaps you should use add columns instead. And you know, it's just going to help you auto optimize as you write. So, I, I I'm hoping in the next couple of years we'll we'll start to get that and just help to auto educate people as they're they're writing this stuff um you know uh, just just on the fly yeah yeah that's definitely uh, one of the very interesting uh things that uh, everybody's looking forward to in the next couple of years for sure yeah <laughs> exactly yeah it's very um, very yeah. enticing yes um with that i i don't think i see any other questions other than just a lot of uh accolades and appreciation uh from from the chat on a really great session today and some very exciting announcement so i just want to uh, say thank you for taking time out of your friday and uh coming on for this this has been fantastic and i very much look forward to the next time we get some um additional dax announcements down the road and having an opportunity to bring you back on again so yeah thank you for for taking time out of this and uh, coming on today jeffrey thank you again for having me uh, one more time on your show it's always a pleasure yeah. and uh, happy new year happy new year to everyone uh, that uh, uh, is is on the on the session listening listening exactly yeah everyone enjoy your new year um and then i will see everyone in 2024 yes absolutely <laughs> all right take care thank you so much for watching please consider hitting that like and subscribe button and if you want to help support this channel take a look at our channel memberships or our merchandise store for cool swag and last but not least, please consider sharing this video on your social media platform of choice to help our channel grow. So, until next time.